email sent. Hey, uh, I'm going to have to call you back in a little bit. I've got a meeting to go to. Okay, bye. Oh, hi. My name is Gilbert Rodriguez, and as you can see, I've got my work laptop, my personal laptop, my personal phone, work phone, phone charger, calculator, a mouse, and headphones. And by the way, the TV is also on, and my wife is uh, on her computer as well. So if you haven't noticed, uh, I've got a lot of gadgets here, a lot of uh, digital noise, uh, and I'm a bit digitally overloaded here. And uh, I'm feeling and maybe I'm looking like I need to digitally decompress. And that's uh, what I'm here to talk to you about today, digital decompression. Digital decompression is part of analog resistance, and it is defined as a condition in which an analog product or service is preferred to its digital alternatives due to its ability to remove cognitive overload from the digital world. For example, you're removing data sensory overload from vast amounts of digital data such as email, social media, web applications, etc., and its ability to provide the individual with sociability and tangibility. Let's explore this topic next with my colleague Brad. Thanks for that great opening, Gelberg. Um, hi everyone, my name is Brad Kastrup. I just want to take a moment to share an example of this digital decompression. Uh, one great example that's popped up recently is the idea of these adult fantasy camps or summer camps. Um, one example, Camp No Counselors uh, allows adults to, to step away, put down their digital devices, and go experience camp like, uh, you know, like we're children with all the perks of being an adult, uh, such as dance clubs and of course alcoholic beverages. Um, these camps are, you know, come in all shapes and sizes, uh, such as space camp, um, rock band camp, uh, that comes along with, you know, KISS, as well as, um, you know, just the opportunity to really step back into that simpler time. Um, so that's just, you know, one of those examples of, of digital decompression. Now I want to send it over to um, Oscar and Heather, and they're going to give you a couple more examples of how this works. Thanks, Brad. Here is another example of a digital decompression, driving a car with a standard manual transmission without any cells driving features. And this example can also fit in the physicality protection concept of analog resistance. People that like to drive cars with manual transmission enjoy the full control of the car and the driving experience is more pleasurable versus the alternative. The advantage of driving manual transmission cars within the physicality concept are the following longer service life of the car, improved driving skills in relation to safety because less distractions, a cure for dead batteries, more power, lower purchase price, etc. Other advantages within the protection concept are that this kind of cars cannot be hacked because of the lack of digital features and it is less likely that these kind of cars can get stolen in the US. However, only 3.6% of cars sold in the US are with manual transmissions, compared with 80% in Europe and Asia. Besides the physicality and protection, we have digital decompression, which provides the driver with the ability to just focus on the road and the immediate surrounding without the clutter of technology. To help market this kind of cars, the big uh, automakers should focus on presenting the advantage of digital decompression that this car offers. Also, they can market the benefits like that people that drive standard car, transmission cars, can get better driving skills. Cars are less likely to get stolen or hacked. And the experience of driving could be more pleasurable due to the synergy between the driver and the car because the driver would feel and listen when the car is ready to shift in to the next gear. Thank you. Thank you for the examples, Oscar and Heather. Here are three key things to know about digital decompression and its benefits. First, health benefits from digital decompression. Apple and other digital companies are offering ways to understand and curb the addiction to digital products, more specifically, phone addiction. They do this by increasing awareness tracking and showing the amount of time spent on your phones and specific apps, providing a weekly summary. Apple also has a do not disturb function during the times you sleep 
for while driving. There is also ongoing research and more and more data of how constant use of several digital devices affect our health. Second, hands-on activities provide self-fulfillment. Activities like camping, making tools, or starting a fire without the aid of technology provide a unique sense of fulfillment and a disconnect from the digital that comes from the valuable know-how to be self-sufficient. These activities not only disconnect us from the addiction and constant reliance in technology, but also help us socialize in person rather than in the isolation of a digital environment. And finally, leverage old school technology. Advances in technology, availability, and increased reliability has made our society over-dependent of it. Planes went from analog to fly-by-wire, digital screens use satellite-based global positioning systems, but in case of emergencies, or even if your batteries run out, old-school analog tools that are not power-dependent like maps and compasses are extremely important and can even help you survive in life or dead situations.